This is how Slugterra begins and ends. The premise of Slugterra is simple but complex at the same time. That's why they released six seasons. The main point of inflection arises at the crossroads of two separate worlds that coexist on our planet. On one hand, the surface, and on the other, Slug Terra, the underground world that exists beneath the world we know. There is a series of caves and caverns where intelligent life thrives that had never mixed with life on the surface. The oldest beings of the civilization under the caves are the elemental slugs. At first, there were only five, water, fire, wind, earth, and energy. From them, a multitude of sub-races and variations emerge. But if something happens to an elemental, their entire species suffers. If an elemental dies or is consumed by darkness, it would break the balance of the universe and have unimaginable consequences. Now, let's forget everything I just said, because now we are going to explain how the story of Slug Terra really began in the first place. Our story begins in China with a young archer named Yang who lived under the regime of a tyrannical emperor who created chaos in the lives of civilians. Yang rebelled against the ruler but was soon defeated and believed to be dead as he fell from the cliff into the land of darkness. However, he was not dead as he was carried away by the current of a river that led him into a cavern in Slug Terra, which he then later named Spring Flower Cavern. There, he began to attract people from his village to escape from the emperor so they could live in peace. At the same time, Yang also met other beings native to the underground of Slug Terra, including the slugs who, when subjected to high speeds, could transform into their sub-element. Soon, Yang was the creator of the art known as Babosa Fu, which is the sole power to guide and control a slug in battle against the enemies. Thanks to the help of his elemental slug friends, Yang protected the location of Spring Flower Cavern from threats and became the first shooter known as the Champion of the East. One day, a traitor revealed the location of Spring Flower Cavern to the Emperor, and a battle was fought between the two armies. The battle between the Emperor and Yang cracked the ground, and the Emperor fell more than 18 levels into the deep caverns of Slug Terra. He landed in a dark liquid that corrupted him, and instead of dying, it made him immortal with unbelievable strength. You might think that an already evil emperor becoming immortal is not fair, and you would be right because, although he had new powers, he could not escape from those labyrinths of the lower levels. So he created an army to help him climb, only to find a powerful barrier that prevented him from advancing. This blockade had been placed by a group named Shadow Clan, who, well, I'll tell you in advance that this universe is huge, so don't be surprised if many characters appear. Get ready with your horses to advance with the main journey of Slug Terra, as we have already finished discussing about the backstory of the whole plot. But, getting back to the Shadow Clan, they were an ancient group of creatures that inhabit the depths of Slug Terra who possess exceptional abilities such as being able to speak with slugs, teleport, and climb. Beyond that, there is not much information about their leaders or hierarchy as the series doesn't describe much. But what is known is that they established this blockade protected by 11 guardian slugs to prevent anything touching the darkness from climbing up to the main levels of Slug Terra. This is why the Emperor had to stay there even after trying his best to climb through with his whole dark army. After thousands of years, the different species of Slug Terra lived in a more or less established harmony. However, there was something they didn't know, or rather ignored. The existence of the surface, the outside world, was now only a rumor known as Burning Land, a land to which no one climbed or descended to Slug Terra. However, I told you a little lie there because there were people who knew about this, more specifically, the Shane family, who kept the secrets of both worlds and tried to keep them from joining, so that the balance would not be broken, as exposing the magic of Slug Terra to the outside world could end up destroying everything, turning the flow of the course of the world in the worst way possible. And so begins the lineage of the Shane. The oldest in the chronological table is Jimo Shane, who became the sheriff of Slug Terra, as well as an excellent shooter alongside his slug. 
He left a guide, a kind of family relic that gave instructions and advice on how to go up and down from Slugterra to the outside world for his future family descendant. We're going to fast forward 1,970 years after the Emperor was sealed in the depths. After that amount of time, we meet Thaddeus Black, son of a vendor who sold products to enhance the slugs from their real form. One day, a man named Vigo Dare comes and engages into a duel with Thaddeus' father, and soon ends up defeating him. Thaddeus refuses to help his father because of the abuse and trauma he received from him. As a result, he is abandoned and captured by Vigo Dare, who takes him to work in the mines. After years pass, Black obtains his first weapon with a slug and begins to work for Vigo Dare as a thief, learning to fend for himself. However, one day he is intercepted by Jimo Shane and spends six months in prison, which ruins his relationship with Vigo Dare. But as we know, time passes and he meets William Shane, son of Jimo Shane, with whom he establishes a rivalry, as they were both excellent shooters. Both are also trained by the Invincible Master, a woman who was the best shooter of all. According to the Master, Thaddeus had a lot of hatred in his heart, so she refused to teach him. As for Will, he would grow up to become the next champion of Slug Terra, establishing a relationship of mutual trust with his elemental slugs. However, the James family were like a type of police force in Slug Terra and Will ends up creating many enemies due to the arrests he must make, including a young boy named Twist, who grew up filled with hatred towards the Shane lineage. Speaking of Will Shane's real family, Will actually had a young son named Eli Shane, who lived on the surface and whom he visited from time to time. This will be more important later, but for now, I have to tell you something. Thaddeus and William had another confrontation in which Will convinces Thaddeus' slugs to abandon him, and they all do. Thaddeus becomes enraged and promises to find a way to forcefully use them again in his favor. Soon, he somehow makes his way to enter the caverns where you meet the Scourges and possibly the Emperor. They gave him the dark water that corrupts the slugs and turns them evil in exchange for a favor and that favor is taking one of their own Devil Diabolos Nachos with his corrupted slug to the higher levels. Black finally defeats William before falling into the vortex where William would disappear. William sends his main slug, Burpee, to find his son and bring him to Slug Terra when he turns 15, but it seems risky to bring his son to a land full of dangers when he's still a kid. But well, for bad parents, there are many other characters in other series although we're not going to get into that topic yet. On the other hand, thanks to what was discovered in the confrontation between Black and William, the Emperor understands the potential of the corrupted slugs and creates a weapon to use them. With them, he breaks the blockade that held him back, easily taking control of the East. He also takes one of the Guardian slugs, a healer named Slug Doc, and transforms her into Goon Dosh, her corrupted version that was created after the transformation. Meanwhile, while all of this is happening, a Yang heir was ready to take his place. Remember Yang? The one who had fought against the Emperor over 1,970 years ago? This is Junji, the next protector of the Spring Flower Cave. The problem is that when he faces the Emperor, he is defeated and possessed by Gundash. So now he is controlled by a slug, and on top of that, to terrorize Spring Flower Cave all of this without people knowing, and they simply believed that he had changed. Remember this, because later on it will become relevant. Can someone tell me what Black is doing? Well, he continues to create corrupted slugs and take control of other areas of Slug Terra, causing everyone to fear him. He takes over the mines of the railway system, which he converts into the Slug Express Metro, and also gets involved in shooting sports to cheat. All of this was made possible thanks to the favor the Emperor did him in the past. And you know it's a bad idea to be in debt with a tyrant Emperor. But that's for later, because now all of Slug Terra was beginning to assume a dark age until the arrival of Eli Shane. Hey, happy 15th birthday, my guy. Now it's time to embark on a journey to Slug Terra. The mission would be to find slugs using all the equipment his father had left him. 
he soon joins a tracker of the native Molnoid species of Slugterra. Without wasting time, they sign up for a contest where they meet Trixie and Cord, and Eli thinks of himself as one of the main champions of short circuit shooters. However, their names in this series are not their strength, so they win a prize of an electroshock slug that they call Jules. Due to the fame Jules gains in the tournament, news of Lysi's presence reaches Black. Before the final confrontation, Black gives Daylight a corrupt slug, which ultimately leads to Daylight's defeat. However, Trixie and Cord decide to join him, and this small team is formed. Later, due to the strange type of trade they have in Slugterra, they exchange Jules for some products, but they later regret it and go back for him. Apparently, Jules was going to be sent to a laboratory to be corrupted into a black slug. Speaking of black, he appears and offers the protagonist to join his side, but he refuses, and a fight ensues. They barely manage to escape, as Burpee creates a powerful wall of fire, but Eli's launcher gets damaged in the process. Over time, the team faces the Hula Gang, led by Black, who is terrorizing a village. Eli's launcher is burned, so they visit Red Hook, an old colleague of William, who gives them a new launcher. They finally defeat the entire gang and obtain a healing slug that can cure corruption. Convenient, but let's give this series a point for following the trail of another slug. They arrive at a region known as the Cavern, where they discover that slugs were being corrupted through the dark water. Of course, the group dismantles the system and frees the workers, but that's not the only reserve that was functioning in Slug Terra. It would be logical, since there is a dark water well in the center of the town that is horribly affecting the Fandango slug race, who, with their great energy, are capable of reversing the effect of corruption, just like the slugs. Healers like ours delve into the cave where they encounter the Shadow Clan and manage to reach the heart of the origin of the dark water in the area. Eli pulls out her healing slug to repair the damage to restore the ecosystem. Soon after, they have a confrontation with a strange group of zombies. I told them that it was full of creatures, and they meet Mr. Saturday, who works for Black. And after a short while, they obtain the Enigma Slug, which, as the name suggests, is a complete mystery. So they better wait and see. Oh, I forgot to mention one more thing. The primary mode of transportation in Slug Terra is creatures called Mega Beasts, which the individuals of the race construct. So far, everything is good with that, right? Well, it turns out that Black had been meddling in the entire construction process, trying to corrupt the Mega Beasts and dominate transportation in Slug Terra. But the protagonists ruin his plans, and not only that, but the group also attacks a refinery owned by Black, which, along with other acts, caused them to be wanted throughout Slug Terra, even with their faces on posters. Due to the manhunt, the city authorities use any excuse to imprison people, and soon they are locked up for spitting on the floor. Of course, Eli turns to Mario Bravado, a former slug shooting champion, for help, and with his aid, they soon escape. While the group is on the run, they encounter a new ally, Twist, whom William Shane had imprisoned when they were young. Twist pretends to join the group and help the protagonists, but in reality, he works for Black. Twist suggests that the group rob a train, and they succeeded, resting in a hideout that belonged to Eli's father. Finally, Twist betrays them and tries to ambush them, but it doesn't end well for him. Black gets fed up and fires the subordinate he brought from the lower caves, called El Diabolos Nachos, which was a bad decision that would cause him problems with the Emperor. In any case, our protagonists come out more or less unscathed from this confrontation. But the story doesn't end there. They are attacked again by the Hula Gang, and during their battle, they crack the cave, causing a bunch of yetis to emerge. I told you, there were all kinds of creatures in this place, even yetis. Shortly after, they meet a girl named Dana, who is the daughter of an old friend of Will Shane named Tom. Tom was Will's friend, until he found out that Will had a relationship with the Shadow Clan, and he challenged Will, but was clearly defeated. Dana wants her share of the treasure, but nobody in the group knows exactly what it is. They find a box full of accessories and artifacts from Eli Shane that were given to him by the Shadow Clan. 
Meanwhile, the Shadow Clan appears and realizes that Eli is Will's son. So, they leave him a device while Dana takes one as well. They also remember that Jimo Shane had written a diary explaining many things about the workings of the underground as well as his life and descent into the surface world. The diary ended up in the hands of a group of hikers who wanted to go to the surface. Dana then takes the diary and escapes with it, telling her friends about the surface world. The protagonist knows he needs to improve, so he trains with the Invincible Master and Twist. Just then, Black arrives and defeats the Master, but before she dies, she gives her weapons to Eli. He fuses an attack between two slugs, creating a powerful discharge that forces Black to repeat for the first time in history. Dana decides to break into Black's lair and steal his launcher, but she almost dies until Eli saves her. As thanks, she returns the Shadow Clan device to him, but he insists she keep it. They discover that the devices are a Shadow Abductor, which allows communication with the Shadow Clan and a teleporter. Excited about the power of the Slug Fusion, they try it again and seek help from Red Hook, who tells them they could do it. To dominate, using the energy from the Vitalis Crystal, an apparently extinct crystal that they managed to find in a landfill. But let's go back to the deep caves where the Scourge lives. It turns out that the Shadow Clan appears again and gives them another teleportation device to travel to the other side of the seal and help the Guardian Slugs who are constantly being harassed. The group passes through, but they are captured by the enemies. When they escape, they realize that the healing slug that was delayed is one of those guardians, so she stays to help keep the portal closed. They remember the fusion shot and discover that it doesn't always work thanks to the Shadow Clan who have appeared to tell them to lower their emotions and not use the fusion shot as if it were the easiest thing in the world, as it harms the slugs. With Enigma's help, they discover that for the special shot to work, the slugs must get along and be compatible. With this knowledge, they try again to generate a shot so powerful that it destroys the entire slug express train controlled by Black. Going back to Burpee, the main slug, she is sick, so the group loses a duel against one of Black's leaders. To cure her, they travel to the Well of Light where, coincidentally, the Shadow Clan appears again and reveals that the power of the slugs is weakened because contact with the evil slugs makes them sick. In any case, they manage to cure Burpee and some of Black slugs who had abandoned him. Speaking of Black, he was running out of slugs and energy, so he was captured by the authorities and was going to be transferred to a maximum security prison. The group escorts the police caravan and faces all of Black's men who were coming to free their leader, but they finally managed to put him in jail. Or so they thought, because then four people appear and Black goes with them, not before revealing to Eli that he was the one who killed his father, Will. As usual, Black attacks to capture small, nearby slugs and turn them evil, so our protagonist must stop him by any means necessary. Everything is becoming absolute chaos as Black is absolutely flawless and has taken over a large part of Slug Terra in a short time with the help of the Flagellants, whom Eli and the rest must defeat one by one. However, they cannot defeat the power of Black, so they turn to the Red Hook once again, only to discover that he has been captured. So they infiltrate and rescue him and Garfio, who gives him an accelerator for his launcher, which makes the attacks of the slugs much more powerful. Unfortunately, not all battles are victories, as Black is building a portal to the deep caverns and it is almost complete. Upon learning this, the group returns to fight against their rival's forces. Now, with the help of the Shadow Clan and thanks to the slugs, they manage to defeat Black and renew the seal that keeps the place hermetically sealed. Although everything seemed to be over, Eli does not want to leave and decides to stay in Slug Terra. Without Black, all the other criminals in the region are trying to dispute the throne, and there is one in particular that stands out, Junji from the Champion of the East Lineage, who had been possessed by Goondosh before. He returns and corrupts Eli. With Eli corrupted, it seems they have to run and save themselves. 
but then the healing slug appears, and with help from Burpee, they manage to defeat Goondosh. Now free from Goondosh's influence, Junji shows himself to be an exceptional shooter and teaches a few tricks to our protagonist. Additionally, Eli finds a recorded message from her father, who tells her that she must gather the five elemental slugs and gives her a map. Unfortunately, they are allied with Black, and have in their possession the corrupted slugs of air and water. However, this alliance is not very firm, and due to all the differences between the two villains, instead of collaborating, they end up helping the protagonist group find the Earth Elemental. They also discover that Von Dock is the best slug of the series and is the Energy Elemental. Now they only need to find the Fire Elemental. The protagonist, along with Junji, have a confrontation with Goondosh's forces, and this villain reveals that he is possessing William Shane, Eli's father, and that is how he knew the location of the elemental slugs. Thanks to Goondosh, Will is freed, and they have the final battle with the help of the elemental slugs. They manage to defeat Black's forces and obtain the five elementals, but they must be fired simultaneously to function. Will pushes Black into a pit, falling himself as well, and the group has to fire all of the elements to restore balance. They succeed in doing so, and at the end of the day, the elementals want to stay with the earth elemental. But all of them together is too powerful, destructive, and active, so Junji recommends that Eli learn the art of slug foo. Everything could have ended nicely here, but soon, for some reason, the information on how to capture the elementals is leaked, and now they have a series of villains after them to steal them. Thanks to this, Eli has the opportunity to use Slug Fu to connect with her slugs and prevent them from fighting against her. Once this is resolved, they take Sushi back to the Flower Spring Cavern, but everything is corrupt and dark, especially due to the presence of the Emperor. The people there think Junji is evil, as he was previously possessed, but now he is a changed man who is a friend of Eli. So the group proposes a tournament in order to see the Emperor, but they have to fight against the former teacher of Junji, who is corrupted by dark magic. However, thanks to the mastery of the elements, they defeat her, and in an act of ignorance, they release the evil energy of the teacher. But then, they awaken the Emperor, so they fight against him and lure him to Springflower Cavern where they manage to throw him into the deep caves and create a new one with the help of the elementals. As if that wasn't enough, after everything is over, a new character appears. A boy named Tad, who rescues Eli and learns his trust. But he's not what we think. He was the son of Black, and they want to know what happens with all of this. Well, the truth is that they won't be able to find out because the series ends exactly like that due to it being cancelled. Yes, one of the programs with the most developed universes on the Disney XD channel has an open ending. So this is all for today's video. We will be meeting again next time on the same channel. Adios for today, my friends. See you next time.